Hare Krishna, dear devotees. So, wanted to seek the blessings of Radha Shyam Sundar, Krishna Balaram, Pal Gopal, Konitai, Shila Prabhupada, Guru Maharaj, and the assembly devotees. Uh, so, thank you very much for joining today. We continue with the devatas. So, we've already had a brief look at Lochiva and Durga Mata, but just backtracking a little bit, who are the principal devatas? So let's just have a look at them. These are their 12 principal devatas, deities. Brahma, the four-headed Brahma, who is the creator of this world. We'll have a look at, at him. Vishnu, the sustainer. Now, he's actually not a devata, but he's one of the 12 principal deities. Vishnu is actually um, um, supreme. He's not, a, he's not a demigod. He's the supreme personality of God. But in this context, in the context of the Trimurti, he's almost um, um, paired with uh, the uh, Brahma and Shiva. So that means he's regarded like a Devata. But actually his position is above the Devatas. And Shakti, which we talked about yesterday, who is also known as uh, Parvati, um, Durga Mata Kali, so many different names. Hanuman is also regarded as one of the 12 principal deities. Lakshmi, the co eternal consort of uh, Vishnu. Again, she's not um, necessarily within the category of demigoddesses because she's part and parcel of the Supreme Lord, consort of, of Vishnu. But she's one of the 12 principal deities. Saraswati, goddess of learning, consort of Lord Brahma. Ganesh, also known as Ganpati, so many names he has, the remover of obstacles, son of Lord Shiva. Skanda is also one of the 12 principal deities, who's also known as Murugan or Kartikeya. He's the brother of Ganesh, son of um, Shiparvati, commander in chief of the Devas. Surya Dev is also regarded as one of the 12 principal deities. Sun God, one of the administrative gods. He's one of the five deities worshipped by the Smartas. Smartas are those who follow the Vedas um, in order to obtain um, benefits from the Vedas, material benefits, who simultaneously venerate Vishnu, Shiva, De Devi, Ganesh, and Surya. Sometimes considered a form of Vishnu, Surya Narayan. 11, Rama and Krishna, so 11 and 12. Note that Radha and Sita are not included in the list of 12 principal deities since they are rarely, if ever, worshipped separately from their respective consorts. So we always, we never see Sita on our own. We never hardly see Radha on our own, except Varsana, as we just mentioned. But Lakshmi is seen separately She's worshipped separately. She has her own temples. And Vishnu also. But uh, Radha, and, uh, Krishna, Radha and Sita, they are always worshipped together with Ra, Ra, um, Krishna and Ram. And this is just uh, something in the syllabuses that is taught in the UK about these 12 deities. What we've just gone through anyway. And then there are the minor deities, minor devatas, uh, the administrative gods. In addition to the 12 main deities listed previously, there's also a number of minor deities. Keeping in mind that they may consider them uh, more exalted or even supreme. They are generally considered to have specific roles within this universe. The main ones are also considered to have charge over the eight directions, beginning with the east, moving clockwise. Indra is in charge of the east, Agni, southeast, Yam, south, etc. So who are these minor deities? Indra, god of heaven, god of uh, king of heaven, god of rain. Agni, in charge of fire. Yamraj, in charge of uh, punishment. Surya. So Surya uh, is already there, actually, one time. Maybe that's more like Surya Narayan, presiding deity of the sun. Varun, presiding deity of water. Vayu is the wind god. Kuvair, treasurer of the demigods. Soma, 
Chandradev, presiding deity of the moon. So we'll talk about uh, those uh, in time. Stava Devata refers to, uh, specifically refers to a minor deity who has a jurisdiction of a particular place, river, forest, village. They are often worshipped in village shrines. A popular deity is uh, Sitala, the goddess of smallpox, who is worshipped in the hope of avoiding the disease. So often we have, um, you know, the Kuldevis, the, Kuldevis, uh, the village deities, or your traditional home family deities. There are many other lesser deities and higher beings who often appear in various stories. They include the Asuras, who is in the fighting mood, the Devas, different types of demigods, lower Apsaras, the celestial uh, nymphs, the Nag, ser celestial serpents, Gandharvas, heavenly singers, the Rakshashas, a race of man-eaters, Prajapatis, progenitors of mankind. And then there's the modern deities. Uh, some deities have risen to prominence more recently. Santoshima, the goddess of content contentment, worshipped mainly by ladies. And there's Ayapan, uh, popular in Kerala. He's considered the son of Shiva and Mohini, the fem female incarnation of Vishnu. Yes, sir. Anyway. Hare Krishna Prabhu Ji, the Rakshasas you say are minor deities. Yeah, because they're powerful. They have power. They are situated just below heaven. They have a, their own place. Um or they may be below in the um, in the lower planetary systems, but they live a life of luxury. So they are also considered to be higher <laughs> beings because they they, they subsist on um, you know uh, they they live in great comfort and wealth and have long lives. It is a bit of a surprise. I know what you mean. <laughs> And they eat men when they're down there, even in this Patal area. In the Patal area, there are the not... There's Naglop, isn't it? Naglop yes, is the that's lower correct. The lower, lower planetary systems, that's correct. Yes, I, I, I presume they have. I presume they kidnap the guys from Earth and devour them. I'm not too sure what their diet is, I have to say. <laughs> but definitely when they're here, they're into eating. Uh, they're into eating men. I thought if they're minor deity, they want the power food. They wouldn't be eating men down when they are in the Patal area. Yeah, but they're regarded as high deities because they are people worship them basically. Those who are in that mode of ignorance hmm. worship the Rakshasas. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Papuji. <laughs> so we'll have a look at Lord Brahma. In the material world, there are three principal deities called the three Trimurti, uh, literally, three deities. They correspond to God's function of creation, sustenance, and destruction. The uh, Brahma, the creator, is in charge of Rajagul, the quality of passion. He may not be in passion, but he's in charge of passion. Vishnu, the maintainer. So in this category, Vishnu is almost regarded as a devata, as opposed to the Supreme Lord, in charge of Satagun, quality of goodness. Lord Shiva is the destroyer, in charge of Tamagun, quality of ignorance. Of course, he is not in ignorance. He's in charge of ignorance. Of these, only Vishnu is the Supreme Personality God. Brahma is a jiva, or ordinary living being, who is nonetheless very pure and powerful. Shiva is practically the same as Vishnu, except when Vishnu interacts with the material nature, he transforms into Shiva. So we've talked about that. Brahma is a title given to the engineer and manager of the universe. He is the first created entity within the universe. So he has a very exalted position. The Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna, in his role as Vishnu, creates the material world. So the, the original creator, the primary creator is Vishnu and the secondary creator is Brahma. 
because Vishnu empowers Brahma to act as the engineer and manager within each universe. Of all the demigods in charge of generating various species of life and managing universal affairs, Brahma is the chief, he is the head of the demigods. Brahma is also the original spiritual mentor of everyone within the universe. Krishna entrusts him with the sum total of all knowledge, the Vedas, by which everyone can attain success in life and ultimately return to the spiritual world. Brahma in turn sees to it that Vedic knowledge is spread everywhere by his representatives. This mission is known as the Brahma Sampadaya or the school of theistic knowledge. Uh, thought uh, uh, originating from Brahma. Now, it's not the case that Brahma is a devotee always. We are very fortunate. The Brahma that is in charge of this universe is a great devotee of the Lord. He has written the Brahma Samhita for our benefit. Uh, but it's not necessarily the case that uh, Brahma is always a devotee. Uh, sometimes uh, he may not be a devotee. The first tier of universal management consists of three executive heads, Brahma, Vishnu, Shiva. Right. So if we see here, this is a very interesting chart. This is like the family tree of God. The original is regarded to be Krishna. According to many authorized scriptures like the Brahma Samhita, the Srimad Bhagavad Puran, Bhagavad Gita, these are very important scriptures. So they say that Krishna is through Bhagavan Swayam. Krishna is the original Supreme Personality of Godhead. From whom expanded Balaram? From whom expands the, the first Chaturgi, the first, um, let me just read, the first quadruple expansion. From Sankarsan comes Narayan, and from Narayan comes all the Vaikuntha planets, Lakshmiji. From Narayan comes the second Chaturvya, second, second quadruple ex expansions. From, some, from the second Sankarsan comes Mahavishnu. This is Mahavishnu. He's lying on the Kaujul ocean. When he's breathing out, millions of universes come out of the pores of his skin. And into every single universe, he further, this Mahavishnu further expands as Garbhadakshai Vishnu. So the first Vishnu is called Karnadakshai Vishnu. Second Vishnu is called Galbhadakshai Vishnu. And then there's a third Vishnu. And the third Vishnu is Paramatma. He expands to be with every living entity in this material world. There's three Vishnus. Each of the three, uh, that's Brahma, Vishnu, Shiva, are powerful controllers that they are sometimes given equal status within Vedic literature and inaccurately called the whole Hindu trinity by Western scholars. So we don't understand them as the trinity. Yeah. They're in charge of the three modes of material nature, but only one of them is supreme. The Srimad Bhagavatam explains that Vishnu is God, or a full expansion of Krishna, whereas Brahma is a finite soul and Shiva is in a category of his own, slightly less than God. Both Brahma and Shiva are servants of Vishnu, empowered by him for universal work. And we've done this a few times. We looked at the different qualities possessed by Brahma, Shiva and Vishnu. Now, these qualities have um, been given in terms of to give us an idea of the relative positions. Of course, the Lord has far more greater qualities, far more qualities than what we're going to specify. But this is just to give us an idea to compare the different categories. Brahma, if, they ha if Bra uh, a soul has 50 qualities in full, then they become Brahma. We possess those 50 qualities, but not necessarily in big quantities. 
And the, the, the more we become qualified with these qualities, um, the higher that uh, the higher our consciousness will be. It's not that we want the 50 qualities to become Brahma. No, that's not the aim of life. The aim of life is to uh, develop godly qualities so that we go back to the spiritual world. Add five to the qualities of Brahma's 50 is Shiva. So we can never become Shiva. He has five more qualities than anybody, any Jiva. Add another five qualities to Shiva and we have 60 qualities, which is equal to Vishnu. So he, again, Shiva cannot become Vishnu. Brahma cannot become Vishnu. We cannot become Vishnu. We are always servant of God. But add another four qualities to Vishnu and we have Krishna. These four qualities um, distinguish Krishna even from Vishnu. Although there is practically no difference between Vishnu and Krishna, they're both supreme, but still there is a small difference. And these four qualities are basically, he has the most amazing devotees, he has the most amazing pastimes, he plays the flute, he, nobody can play it like him, and he dances, uh, nobody can dance like him. So those four qualities distinguish him even from Vishnu. When a living entity has 50 qualities fully manifest, then he is eligible to become Brahma. So if we want to become Brahma, we could. And there's a specific way to do that. It says that if one is a Brahmachari, not married for a hundred lifetimes, and has these qualities, then they become, they, they become eligible to become Brahma. When the living entity comes from the spiritual world, then as his level of purity is very high, he's likely to be given the post of Brahma. So if somebody is coming downwards from the spiritual world, they're going to be very powerful because they're just coming from the spiritual world. So it's very likely that their position when they first come to this world will be that of Brahma. If there's no suitable, um, sorry, uh, yes, yes, um, yes, Rohan. Prabhuji, so is that why I remember you saying in the um one of uh, in the uh, in the school uh, school lectures yesterday um, that you were saying that when a baby is born, he has the qualities of Brahma. I think that it, it, or you said something similar similar to that because because they just came from the spiritual world, so so they actually look like or they. Or you stop, or maybe I got that mixed up. You yeah. said something similar, yeah, similar, yeah. To, yeah. similar to, to, it's to similar to what I just said. Not a baby, yeah. but when a living entity first comes into this material world from the spiritual world, he's right. extremely powerful, extremely powerful, and that's why he's given the power of Brahma to, to, to create this world. So that's not the, that's not the same thing as a baby, then. No, no. Oh, no, 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 no. Definitely not. So what do you mean by when 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 the spirit being comes to this earth? Like ah, right, right. See, at the we were in the spiritual world, but for some reason we decided we wanted to be like Krishna or like Vishnu. So we had a little bit of envy within our heart. Oh, I wonder what it's like to be God. So what the Lord does when that happens, He he sends that soul to the material world in order to experience what it is like to be envious or away from God or wanting to try to enjoy one as God is enjoying. So because that soul has just entered the spiritual, the material world, from the spiritual world, he possesses a great deal of spiritual energy. Right? He's just come from the spiritual world. And what happens to that soul, generally speaking, he would be given a very high position within the universe because of his tej, his uh, potency, his strength, his spiritual strength. But what happens to that soul, because 
he is in the mood of enjoying, he becomes a little proud of himself, a little arrogant, um, because he's more powerful than anybody else in this world. And that arrogance and pride makes him glide down into the next life to lower positions. And then he gets entrapped in this material world, in this cycle of birth and death. Does that make sense, Ron? Yes. So when he said that he, uh, when he's uh, initially born onto this earth, he has so much power, in what form is he born as then? Brahma. Not on earth, he will be in the heavens. He'll be, uh, he'll be uh, probably in Satyalok. And we'll show you Satyalok uh, in due course of time, which is within this material world. But it's... Um, it's even way beyond the heavenly planets. Uh -huh. So that's, he won't come to earth because his strength would be far too superior for earth. Earth wouldn't be able to, um, he wouldn't be able to cater for his ability. Right. So, okay. Could you just? I'm I'm so sorry to ask you again. Could you repeat that first part where you said that when the when the soul when the spirit initially comes down to, I thought that you meant that when the spirit comes down to this earth, he is very much like Brahma. But you were saying not actually on earth, but some other higher realm. Next yes, to earth. every universe right. has fourteen planetary systems, and Earth is the seventh one. Right. Okay. Yeah. But there's six other planetary systems higher than Earth. So you oh, so, oh, I see. So first they always land at the at the top at the, and top, at the top of the ladder. That's right, it. I see. And then he, and then you're saying whilst he he or she is at that very top level, they become proud. That's and it. Then, and so they I'm mean, so for how many years do they live that live in that in that top? Oh level? long time. Long time. Long time. Uh, so in that so mm. in that in that long time period that they live with maybe thousands or millions of years, they trillions. demonstrate so so what's that? How many years? Trillions. Yes. Yeah. They, yeah. they they demonstrate to Krishna that they're not really worthy because they are acting too proud. And so then Krishna then uh, downgrades them to uh, to the lowest realms. Is that right? Yeah, effectively through the laws of nature. Krishna doesn't get involved directly. Right. Yeah. It's more material nature, karma. Yeah, you know? karma. Yeah. yeah. That, so that then, takes over. So the um, automated system that Krishna had uh, developed then brings them down to a lower realm. So do they go straight down to earth or they, or they go no. down to even, even the depends, lower, lower depends on the karma. Realm. Depends on the karma. Right, that okay. is very complex. That is hard to... Every soul will be different in how they behave, what their desires are, mm. what their consciousness is. And those mm. three things will determine the next life. Karma, mm. consciousness, and desire. Mm. Wonderful. So, okay. and so you're saying that uh, we have the same, same amount of power or qualities as Brahma. We can, uh, we can. but yeah. after many, 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 uh, many lifetimes of austerities of being a being a brahmacharya, you could attain the position of Brahma. But what what's the point? What's the point? Because you're still in this material world. Right. We right, want right. to go to beyond this material world. Hmm. You know. Right. So you're saying that we can. So by by doing this. Um, practice this, you know, by chanting the holy, mm. the Maha Mantra at least 16 times a day, we can bypass all those stages of, of trying to get to, to the Shiva level and the Vishnu level and we go straight to Krishna by doing the daily 16 rounds. Is that what, what, what this, what the whole movement means? That's part of the process. Uh, it's, it's a journey and it's, a marathon, not a sprint. Mm -hmm. It can take a moment. It can take many lifetimes. Mm -hmm. All is dependent on our commitment, our sincerity, our you know humility, all those different qualities coming into play. 
the more serious we are, the more we'll attract the mercy of God. One thing is for sure, nothing can happen without his kindness. So without, you know, we have to invoke that mercy from the Lord. Mm. And the only way we can invoke that mercy, or sorry, not the only way, but the main way, is be, being very greedy for that mercy. My dear Lord, you know my position. I am in a very low position. I need your, I am begging, I am crying for your mercy. That is, um, that is the, the most effective way to get closer to God. Because when he sees that, he reciprocates. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your questions, eh, Ron. Okay. If there is no suitable living entity capable of acting as Brahma, so if, if there's no living entity who's capable of doing the creative, creative process, then Garbhadaksha Vishnu himself manifests as Brahma and acts accordingly. So this is very interesting. So the Lord will always judge who is qualified to control the universe. So what's the roles in the universe? Vishnu is in charge of the primary creation as well as maintenance and moral goodness. Brahma is in charge of secondary creation and the mode of passion. Shiva is in charge of destruction and mode of ignorance. Working under these powerful controllers are many demigods or devas empowered to fulfill universal duties. As departments within a local government manage the delivery of water, electricity, devas oversee the material world. So it's very similar to having a, a kingdom with a government within it who's running the country. So the same way there is a Supreme Lord who um, appoints uh, a cabinet to run, or appoints Brahma, who appoints a cabinet to run the universe. We should not mistakenly worship the devas as God. What this means, it doesn't mean we can insult the devas or disrespect them. That's not what we're saying. But what we're saying is the worship, our worship, should be exclusively for the Supreme Lord as opposed to the Devas. It doesn't mean we neglect the Devas or ignore the Devas or disrespect the Devas. We're indebted to them. They supply life's necessities on God's behalf, using his energies. We pay our debt to them. How? By worshipping the Supreme Lord. Just like if there's a tree, there's no point trying to water all the leaves, you will never, the tree will die eventually. You'll never be able to succeed to water the leaves. But if you water the root, then your whole tree becomes nourished. So in the same way, you water the root, the root cause of everything. That's the Lord, Vishnu, Krishna, and everybody's satisfied. According to Vedic descriptions, Brahma is the first uh, form material in the material world that emerges from Ishwar in the beginning of creation with specific nature aspects and functions. In Vedic literatures, we find a cosmic calendar that shows a cycle of ages and how to break out of it. So this is uh, quite sorry, Prabhu? Prabhu yes, I'm so sorry. Could you go back to that previous slide? Yes, yeah, sure, sure, sure. So, I mean, it's really fantastic. It's just great, great information, great content, and you go into a lot of work. I can see that. Um, I just wanted to make get something clear here. So, Vishnu is the creator of the primary creation, mm. and 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 then you mentioned about the secondary creation. Uh, what is what is the primary creation and the secondary creation? What is good, uh, good, good, good questions. The primary creation is when he when he breathes out. This is Mahavishnu. Mahavishnu. Yeah, when he breathes, and who is Mahavishnu? Here he is. He is the incarnation of Sankar, Sankarshan. Mahavishnu also known as Karana Daksha Vishnu. He lies on the casual ocean. Oh, when, is that, is that, is that the same? same? It's the same. Uh, no, I mean, is that the same Krishna that we see um, lying on um, on the snake Sesha? Uh, not necessarily, no. That one yeah. is... 
is uh, this one here, Paramatma. Paramatma. Yeah, and we'll see that later. Yeah, we'll and and, and it is that snake uh, that he's lying on that becomes Balarama, his brother, isn't it? You could say that, but actually, this snake is an incarnation of Balaram. It's not the other way around. But I, I, I hear what you're saying. It's just, yes, they're connected. They're connected. Yeah. yeah. Very good. 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 And so, so and this, is, this is the primary creation. This is the primary creation. He breathes him out. All the universes come out. So where and is Shiva? Where is Shiva in that whole whole link? In ah, that, in Shiva that... is going to be the link between Vishnu and the material world. He's the link. If you go back to the previous slide, uh, where, ah, where is... no, he doesn't appear here. Uh, this chart doesn't go far enough down. Oh, I see. Further down. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's so correct. why so why is there two two vows vows of devas? That's one on on the first oh one. yes there's the there's the there's the first then these are the source of um, Ram Lakshman um, Bharat and Chatugan and these are not too sure but there is a in the in the Shrimad Bhagavad Puran the second quadruple incarnation is mentioned as well they have a specific purpose mainly connected to Vaikuntha. So one time we'll go through the structure of the spiritual world and you'll mm -hmm. see how that connects now uh, with this. Mm -hmm. That's a different topic altogether. Huh? Mm -hmm. So the secondary creation is where Brahma creates our planets in this world. Yeah. He's given that power by Vishnu. Oh. Yes. Yeah. Then, the primary creation is done. Is it? Uh, do they have living entities in it, or it's only the? Uh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. We're in the body of Vishnu, in the body of Garbhadakshi Vishnu. Planet that comes out from the pore, there are living entities in it, and not in the pore, uh, because the universal universes are in a shape of a universal egg, all of them. Yeah. There's no living entities outside of that egg. They're all within the body of... You see, within that egg, there is a second Vishnu, who's known as Garbhodaksha Vishnu. And yes. all of the living entities are in his body at that time. So who is who is um, Ishwara? Because I, I, I understand Vishnu, Brahma and Shiva, but where does Ishwara come into all this? Ishwara Paramakrishna. Ishwara is, means the Supreme Lord. So Ishwara is Vishnu, Ishwara is Krishna, Ishwara is uh, Narayan, Ishu, and the Parama Ishwar, the Supreme Ishwar is Krishna. Because Brahma Samhita, first verse, he says, Ishwara Parama Krishna, Satchit Ananda Vidra, Nathir Adhir Govinda, Sarva Karana Karanam. So what Brahma is saying, the origin, the cause of all causes is Krishna. And he is Ishwara Paramakrishna, the original supreme personality of God. Oh, I thought Ishwara uh, was a name of, of some God. Ishwara, no. Ishwara means supreme controller. It's oh, not, right. it's, it's an address. It's like a Mr. or Sir. Oh, I see. I, I, okay. Yeah. So if you, if you don't mind, if you could go back to the first slide that you, that you showed, where, where you showed the actual like, hierarchy. So, uh, where is Ishwara there then? In that, oh, that, yeah. you know that, Ishwara, as I said, Ishwara Parama Krishna. They're all Ishwar. They all are Ishwar. But the original Ishwar. Oh, so, is so that top part where it says in, in yellow, Lord Krishna, the cause of all consciousness. That's it. That, that whole, that whole uh, sentence can be uh, replaced by one word, Ishwara. You could say that. But Ishwara. Is, is not uh, a term we necessarily use to address the Lord because oh. that is a very formal term, you know, like, like uh, sir. sir. But okay. our, our mood with the Lord is that we want to have a, a close personal relationship, not a relationship of, of my dear sir, right? Okay. But it can right. be, it can be that way. Right. But, right. but, we want to also develop a loving 
close relationship. So rather than say Ishwar, we would say Krishna or uh, <laughs> something like that. Damudar, Keshav. He's got so many names right, right. which attracts him. If you say Ishwar to Krishna, it's like you know, going to the office and they're calling you sir. You don't get that much attraction. But when you come home and you know that little kid calls you papa or whatever it is, you know, okay. you become you know, you become quite attracted to that. Yes, I understand. Okay. Good, good questions. Thank you so much. Any Nani Ben, are you happy? Yeah, what I understood is that when the from each pole the universe comes out, okay? Mm. In, in each of the universe, Garbodaksha Vishnu finds his place, settles. Yes. And from Garbodaksha and Vishnu from his uh, from his navel, the lotus stem comes out. Correct. And from it, the Brahma is at the top of the stem. Correct. And then when the and at that time the secondary creation takes place when the yeah. is it the Lord that glances? Yes. Mahatatwa. Yes, he takes, that's he correct. Tries to produce. That's correct. Yeah. And, the, and the living entities are in the Lord at that time. And he transfers with that glance the living entities to Shiva. Living entities are transferred in that. Yeah, with the glance it is transferred to the... It's transferred to... Shiva, Shakti, Durga Mata, who, who then uh, do their work of um, basically allocating where everybody goes. Where does Brahma come into it? Um, because he's in charge of creating. So he's, he's going to be um, putting the structure of the universe together in conjunction with Shiva and Shakti. They're working together, hand in hand. Mm -hmm. But they all have to work together because Brahma cannot take the living entity. He's, he's a living entity himself. So he needs the, the agency of Shakti and he needs the agency of Shakta, uh, Lord Shiva, in order to uh, populate the universe, basically. Right. It's quite a complex. Um, we, we it's quite to, a, I think we'll have to give a session to that of creation, primary and secondary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've done that. We, we can do that again. Yes, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else? Prabha Ben, Madhu Ben, are you guys okay? This is amazing content. I, I'm blown away. It's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Oh, hello, Prabhuji. Yes, yes, uh, Prabhupada. Yeah, really interesting, but still difficulty in understanding. Oh, it is hard. So uh, I have to go through again. <laughs> but but too, to too, too much to remember. Yeah, sure. But also, we don't have to remember too much, um, Prabhupada. Oh. This is just to give an idea. Uh, but if we if we don't understand, it doesn't matter. I don't fully understand it myself. But yeah. what I'm giving you is what is given in the scriptures. And I don't necessarily fully, like Nani Bino say, how does that actually work? We don't we don't actually know. Yeah, it's true. Like the, the way you were saying that um, uh, Vishnu is uh, breathing and all the creation is coming yeah. out. That's but true. still it's uh, difficult. And uh, the living, what did you say? The living... Living entity. Living being. Yeah, living entity is coming out from hmm. when he's breathing. And uh, that is difficult universe. to understand. Yes, the universes are coming out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, this is, is it, inconceivable. Yeah, so is it... Um, I'm sorry, because I missed the first part. Is it? Is it that the universes are coming out as uh, from, his, from his mouth? As his, or, 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 or from, from his, his body. Uh, from the pores of his skin. Oh, fantastic, right, yeah. So these are like... If you, of if you imagine your room yeah. full of muscle seeds, that's how right. many universes... Muscle seeds, what is it? Oh, yeah. mustard seeds, mustard seeds, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Billions of universes come out of his body, yeah. billions. Yes. It's unimaginable. Yes, really fantastic. Thank you so much, Prabhupada. This is great content. 
Thank you. Well, hopefully you... Um, Hare Krishna Prabhuji, thank this. you. Yes, yes, Prabhu. Yeah, yes, Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Uh, I think Madhuban wants to ask. Okay. Yes, Madhuban? Yeah, Jishi Krishna Prabhuji. Just I wanted to know about uh, quality, whatever you said, 50, 55, 60, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> can we... Can we Find, uh, find out are, what sort of quality this 50 quality is there. Yeah, yeah. There, there is a list somewhere. I can't remember where we put it now. Yeah, if, you can, if you can find out, just I'm interested. What quality? Yeah, basically, it'll be like humility and, you know, like uh, compassion. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, but if, if there if anywhere the list of the quality... Yeah, yeah, like there know. is, there is, there is a list somewhere. Yeah. And second, to... <laughs> I'm sorry, so, yeah, scary one, yes, scary no, one. Go on, go on. Yeah, second thing, to be honest, I, I don't understand 100% today's topic. So if possible, give me second time or other time, whenever we have time, just easy way a little bit. And yes, little yes. Stuff. Yes, yeah. we, can, we can do it much. This is a lot of detail. Normally, we don't go into so much detail, but I am doing it because I want to also learn from it. No, I think, can I just can I just say that mm. even though it may seem like a lot of detail, we need this detail to fully understand it. Otherwise, if you leave out certain things like that, then there's going to be little gaps mm. in the knowledge and we're going to get confused. So I'm really happy that you do go into such detail. It's, it's very, very welcome. And much. Yeah, no, it's good. It's good. I, li I like your enthusiasm to learn. That's good. <laughs> it's really great. I mean, yeah, I'm so inspired by this. Good. No, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, let's. We we'll, we've got a lot of detail, so it's. I love it. Good. That's what I like. No, good. Good. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for in your inquisitive nature. It's good. Uh, anybody else? Okay. So let's talk. Thank, thank, thank you. you. Lord Brahma Ki Jai, Lord Vishnu Ki Jai. Jai.